All right, let's go over an assignment on shutter speed. As you know, in reviewing module five, it's all about shutter speed. We can have, we can capture a bird in motion. We can capture a taxi in motion. We can also have it sharp and the background blurry by panning. We can capture water. We can have it sharp and crispy, or we can have it in a nice mist. It all depends on our shutter speed. Now, keep in mind, if you want something nice and sharp, like a person running, we're gonna have that shutter speed at one over 500. If we want that person, on the other hand, to be really blurry, we would, might choose one over eight, one over four, or one over two for our shutter speed. For this example, and what we're gonna be working on in this assignment, we're gonna be taking three photographs. The first one will be motion blur, and these settings are suggested. Now remember, for your camera and your lighting situation, it may be different. So, the first one, we're gonna have a motion blur, and we have one over 30th. We're gonna set our camera on shutter priority and our ISO on auto. So your camera on one over 30 and take your picture. And that photograph will have a blurry person and a short background. The second photograph will be freezing motion and you'll set your camera at one over 500th of a second. In this case, we will have both a short person and a sharp background. The third photograph is gonna be one over 30th on our shutter and we're gonna pan following in the direction of our subject. For instance, in number three, let me make this a little bit larger for you. In number three, we're panning from right to left. How do I know that? Because our subject is moving from right to left. Once again, we set our camera at one over 30th of a second, our ISO on auto, and the camera will decide on what is the f-stop number. Now, here's a variety of different charts for you to review. I encourage you to watch this video, Photographing Motion with a Camera, that see further directions. It is imperative and highly recommended that you use a tripod. You can check out a tripod at the library. I would call ahead and make sure they have tripod available. Also remember, you can check out a camera at the library. Let's review these 13 directions. Look for a location to photograph your assignment. So you want an area where there's a lot of bus a busy street, like a busy corner, where there's a lot of cars going by. Um, so that's number two. Position yourself on the sidewalk. Obviously, you're not gonna be in the middle of the street. Make sure the person or object is moving parallel to you. Once again, moving from left to right or from right to left. In this case, in the, in the screenshot of the video that you're gonna be looking at, you would start on your left side and follow the direction of the bicyclists and the cars moving from left to right. Let's go back. Key fact, if you're holding your camera with a shutter speed that is lower than 1 60th, you will have camera shake. The key and easiest thing to do is set your camera on a tripod. Once again, tripod, very important. I even made it in bold. Put your camera on shutter priority if you have a Nikon that is S or a Canon, which is TV. Depending on the kind of motion and what you want to get, you have to decide. If you want a motion blur with a person blurry and your background sharp, start at 1 30th of a second. Remember I say start because it could be different for you and your lighting conditions. If you want to freeze motion, you're going to go 1 over 500th of a second. If you want to pan, we're going to go back to 1 30th of a second. Remember to follow in the direction of your subject left to right or right to left. If you're doing, for instance, a ball going from top to bottom, that's not gonna work because we wanna go from left to right. Instead, move that ball from left to right or left right to left. If you insist that the ball go up and down, then your camera needs to move from top to bottom or from bottom and up. It's a lot more difficult and I recommend that you not do that. Remember the panning to follow your subject, talked about that, ISO and auto, we got that. You don't have to worry about the f-stop because your camera is gonna be on shutter priority. Refer to the chart below and decide what kind of motion you want in your photograph. Complete the table below. <clears throat> 
So we have a table and this is blank. You're gonna fill in your f-stop, your shutter speed, and your ISO. You are not gonna write auto for ISO. You need to have an exact number. To get the blank table, we, or you can create one of your own, you click onto this link here and here's a blank table. All you have to do is go file, make a copy. You can't, this is not editable, so you may need to make your own or copy it and make it to your own, take it to your own Google Drive. Remember when you go to your Google Drive, click on download and then select PDF because I will only accept PDF documents for this assignment for your table. In addition to that, we're gonna be having three photographs, 01 underscore SS for shutter speed, underscore last same, underscore first same dot JPEG. All of your images must be submitted as a JPEG file. I do not want any tables of images. I want the I want your JPEG images sep uploaded separately. Your your table should be labeled 05 table underscore last name underscore first name. What to submit? Three JPEG files correctly named and a complete table in a PDF format. Once again, do remember your ISO, I need a number. Do not write auto or you're gonna be losing points. Let's review some student examples. For instance, we have Maria's. She's doing number one. The object is in, the background is in focus and the object or a subject is blurry. Second one, we're freezing motion. The object and the background are in focus. The third one, our object is in focus and our background is blurry, but this time we're capturing motion. And then we're panning, in this case, from right to left. How do I know we're panning? What I look for are these distinct lines right here. You can see them, they're really blown up now. The lines, that shows me that you're moving the camera in that motion. Here are suggested settings, and this actually, no, these are her settings and how she got her camera. Now we're gonna look at Melissa. Once again, we want motion blur. So the object or subject is blurry and the background is sharp. The second photo, both are sharp. The third one, we're panning. <clears throat> and she is moving from the, sub the camera person, which is, who is it again? Melissa. Melissa is moving from left to right. How do I know she's panning? because I can see those lines. You see those lines right there? I'm, I'm moving the mouse over. Those lines are straight. That means she's panning. I know that it's panning. If your lines aren't straight, you weren't panning. And here are Melissa's settings. Now we're gonna look at Alexis. Once again, motion blur. The subject is sharp. The background is blurry. Freezing motion, both the subject and the background are sharp. Third, panning. This time the camera's going from left to right and we have the lines. You see the lines? I'm motioning at the lines. And then here is that person's um, table. Remember this is worth 10 points. Also remember, in your table, do not write ISO auto. So let me zoom out again. And, well, I'll just use submission. Here we are, ISO, you need to write a number and not just write auto. I look forward to looking at your photographs. Have a great day.